Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So something I got asked recently and I thought it'd be kind of fun to try and do this week is how to do like a closed circuit television camera, basically a security camera effect in Minimator. My first response was, well, you probably can't, you would need to use like a video editor or whatever. But then I was like, well, what could you do in Minimator? So that's what we're gonna explore today. So the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is bring in a camera. The reason I'm going to do this is because this is going to be our scene camera. I don't know if you have to do it this way. I was going to test it, but I ran out of time, unfortunately. But uh, what we're going to do is just go ahead and have this selected so we can have the camera properties up here. I'm just going to call this one uh, camera A, just so we can know that this is our camera for the actual shooting of the scene. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to be using other cameras here and uh, we want to make sure that this one is the first one, which I think theoretically is the one that Minimator will use to shoot the scene and the other ones will be used for other things. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, basically what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bring in another camera like so. I'm gonna call this one uh, closed circuit TV, T TV uh, dash one. We'll just do something like that. And with this one selected, as you can see here, the selected camera is that one. So I'm going to go ahead and take it and let's say, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so it's not so hard to see. Let's just say we wanted a security camera here. Like, it, like say if there was one on the corner of this building, let's aim it that way. Then I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this one and I'm going to rename this one to the number two, not 12, two. And uh, now that it's selected, as you can see, it says right there, CCTV two. And I'm going to move this one, let's just say to this corner of this building, something like that. And it's going to be aiming here. Sorry, I don't have a better schematic. I just chose one real quick. And uh, this is what I ended up with. So what we have here are two cameras. This is basically our security cameras. And you could have a little model if you wanted to, to actually represent them visually in the scene. But for now, we're just going to go with this. And let's see if we can make it look a little bit more interesting. Let me first go ahead and check my render settings and we want this to be small and we're gonna turn down our sunlight so that way we don't kill the computer trying to render these scenes in real time. So with CC2 uh, selected, see as you can see if I click on a different one it switches the angle and that's what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and have this one selected and I'm gonna go to its color properties first. And in this tab, we're gonna go down here to this button right here, enable advanced color effects. If that's not already open, then you can click that. And then we have these options here. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to see this here. That's why I went and turned down my render settings, but uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, so let's go ahead and just mess with this one. So as you can see there, it kind of changes colors for things like that. Don't know if that's gonna get us the effect we want. I could do these things. Basically what we're trying to do is find a way to make like a black and white uh, camera. So it may be more or less, you know, a combination of these that we could do in order to make that happen. But uh, I'm not 100% sure right off the top of my head. So we're just going to go ahead and mess with some of these and see that actually is doing it right there. So go to the subtract on the HSB and bring it over to the right side. They're both black, but uh, the saturation change. So bringing the saturation up actually makes it go lesser. So then you can do that. We can adjust the brightness here. We can adjust the mix percentage on the color so we can actually give it a tint if we wanted to. Let's just say if you had some kind of weird tint you wanted to give it a little bit of a color. Uh, I don't really think we need anything like that. Let's just go ahead and reset it. And you would probably want some of like the brightness and contrast adjusted on this, but I'm not 100% sure exactly what you would want to change. Let's just bring this up a bit and see what we can do. That's actually not too bad. We'll do that like so, because, you know, security camera is going to have a bit of a look to them, you know. This may not be ideal, but we'll go with that. And uh, we're just going to copy these settings. I actually should have set that up for the other one. So what I'm going to do actually is duplicate this one and I'm going to name it uh, just to have that for now. Never mind. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. Uh, I was trying to do something there, but it wasn't quite working out. So let's just go, go ahead and just go ahead and rename this one. And then we're just going to move it. I'm just going to bring it over here. 
like so. So we've got basically how you might would imagine a camera being in the real world. One's facing one way, the other's facing the other, and you get a look at things going on in the world around you. So uh, now if I don't select any cameras, then you can see that the active camera is the CCTV camera. And maybe that is because it's the most recently created one. That might be backwards. So uh, we're gonna learn that today, hopefully. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how you change which camera is active in the scene other than uh, by the visibility, but we don't want these to be invisible, I don't believe. So we're just gonna... So I thought maybe making the uh, keyframe there would actually actually do something, but it's not going to work, man. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one, actually, and let's go ahead and delete the original and see if that becomes our active camera. Okay, so it's the most recent camera you've brought into your scene, apparently, that becomes the active camera of the scene. So uh, hopefully that'll remain consistent and that will work. So basically that's it. If you wanted to film with this kind of look, then you could. But my idea is what if you had like a security room and you want to have like the screen where the security guard is watching what's happening on the uh, closed circuit television cameras. Uh, so we want to have that. So what I'm going to do is actually go up here to a surface. I'm going to bring in the surface like so. Let's go ahead and click on it and bring it over. And if you watched my reflection tutorial, then you know exactly what I'm doing here. Now that I've got the surface created, what I'm going to do is come down here to its texture and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to say I want your texture to be CCTV1. And that makes it the first camera over here to our right. And the aspect ratio is a bit off and I want that to not be the case. So what I can do, if I did want it to be square like this, then I could adjust the camera here. I can go to its settings and go to the screen ratio option. And I can shrink it in like this, which is not what we want to do. We want it to be wider because this is narrower. Whoops, this is narrower than the camera. Ugh, rotating around the wrong point here. Okay, so this is narrower than the camera. So for the camera, we want to squash it outward in order to make it uh, fit the aspect ratio of this. Now, as for how much you want that to be, I'm not 100% sure. I'm just going to go with, say, 0.75 maybe, and that would do about like that. And then, of course, we can adjust the field of view. So we can give it kind of a, a little bit more of a fisheye effect like a security camera might have or a zoomed in effect like a security camera might have depending on where it is located. So that's what we're going to do with this one. We're going to leave it square. If you want it to be rectangular, then you would just need to resize this. I think I did that recently on another tutorial. You can go back, feel free and check that out if you want. Uh, resizing a surface to meet the actual like texture that's applied to it. But for this one, maybe we want to just have it square because it's, you know, a security camera. So with this like this, I'm going to go ahead and rename it. First of all, I'm going to say uh, CCTV screen one and then i'm gonna duplicate it and then i'm gonna bring it over to the side like so which should be 516 i guess negative 516 and that way they are directly side by side and that's how we want it to be i'm gonna rename this one i'm actually gonna leave that one as number one because it's on the left and we're gonna rename this one number two we got a number two. And then we're gonna go to its texture properties and go to CCTV2. And there you go. So there's your screen. You could build a rig around this to make it like a monitor or something, you know? I could actually bring in, let's just say, let's hope this works without crashing anything. There we go. What I'm gonna do is just resize this cube here. Go to scale. I'm gonna dangle, bring down the properties by clicking on that button. And we wanna bring it in, we wanna make it narrower like a screen might be, let's go 0.1, something like that, probably, okay, good enough. And uh, we wanna go ahead and double the X value, I presume here, too. And that's gonna make it basically the same exact size as these screens. And what I'm also gonna do is just go ahead and select both of these, and I'm gonna drag them down to the cube. Like, let's say if this was a monitor rig, then we would want to have that be the case there. And we're gonna have to zero out the position of these here, and then I'm gonna have to fix that. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. It's basically the same thing we did a moment ago, but you know, we'll uh, just go ahead and take care of that. All right, so I went ahead and drug these out, but actually I forgot to mention that they are gonna be stretched to the size of this. So what we wanna do is 
do not inherit the scale. We're going to click on these and go over here to their properties and say do not inherit the scale. And then we're going to have screen one be over here, which should be probably negative four, I guess. And this one is going to be over here, maybe positive four. And there you go. Just like that. And they're not set properly for this because there's going to be, you know, I didn't, uh, do anything with that I just drug them out so we want it to be not too far out maybe we'll go about eight hopefully make both of these eight on the Y the problem is you get this if you watched my texture fighting or Z clipping tutorial then you know what that's all about let's go ahead and bring it out to nine it really depends on how far the camera is going to be away from it if you watch that tutorial you should hopefully understand that and uh, that looks pretty good and it's not sticking off too far you could actually build like more of a rim around it if you wanted to or something but we're just gonna do this real quick and give you the basic idea I'm sure you can guys can figure it out uh, let's go ahead and name this one frame kind of speeding through this here hopefully that's not a problem for you guys uh, and we're gonna just go ahead and bring this up to say 2.5 whoa that's, that's a bit too much 2.05 and we're gonna bring it up on the Z like maybe 1.05 and uh, then we can just grab both of these and I'll drag them up just a tad so we have kind of this frame around them. Something like that, all right? I don't know what I'm doing. All right, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and bring this up. So we've got a black frame around them and it looks good. And as you can see, when I mess with that scale, it put this border between these two, which you may want if you're going for like an individual screen kind of thing. If you wanted them actually side by side, like they're just windows on a monitor, then uh, you might need to finagle those into position. But we're good to go. And I'm just going to leave that hover in there for now because we're not actually building a scene. And uh, the last thing we may want to do, our last couple of things, is we want to go ahead and give these cameras a little bit of rotation, right? So let's go ahead and zoom in on the timeline using the scroll wheel. And let's say we're just going to go ahead. This is not probably the number you would want to use, but we're just going to use that for the sake of the tutorial. So we've got the uh, stuff there and we want to go ahead. Let me bring this up so we can see the camera here. And I want to just have it kind of rotate like this. So what you would get is this movement here. Like it goes back and goes forth like so. And I actually shouldn't have these keyframes. I had the timeline marker moved up. So let me go ahead and just delete these. Hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Drag it back like so. And we're going to do the same for this camera over here or this one here, I mean. And uh, we're just going to put another keyframe. We don't have to place the keyframe that way, but that's just the way I did it. And I'm just going to go ahead and have it pan out. So we're just going to have that one pan out like so and be done with it. So you got this movement here, looks over. That's actually probably too far. It's moving a bit too fast for my taste. Something like that. We'll do like that. And then what we're gonna do is take those two movements because it's just a security camera that's looking back and forth. You may not want it to move at all, but if you wanted it to, then we're gonna hit Control C to copy that, or you can come down here and copy uh, keyframes right there. Copy select the keyframes. Then we're gonna move up since we're going with 30 frames per second, we're going to go to the 60th frame and I'm going to hit control V or you can hit con the uh, button right there. And it actually didn't put it where I want it to. And then we can just keep pacing these however we want. It's going to be about, whoa, 120 there. And what you get is this movement, like the camera is just going back and forth. And uh, it's a little bit rapid. We may not want that. So what I'm going to do, select all those keyframes. Come down here to keyframe in the properties and hopefully this will set these all to the same thing and let's try one of these the ease in ease out quadrant uh that's not exactly what we want we need it to be a little bit sharper on the movement there typically you would want there to be a uh, kind of a stop in the motion as it gets to the end so let me try this one All right, so that's not a very good thing. You would probably want it to come out. It would pause for a moment and then it would go back. So you can kind of figure out the best way to do that with your keyframes. Uh, but that's what we're going to go with there. Just as a little basic thing there. And if we come back over to our monitor here, then what we should get, dang old stuff, should get this. 
the cameras are sitting there moving back and forth. This is a horrible animation, uh, but you can see it wouldn't be that difficult to animate these. You just need to have them churn. It would pause for a moment and then churn back the other way, pause for a moment, and kind of keep doing that over and over, like you would expect a security camera to do, man. All right. Another thing that you could do is add an interface, like if you remember how we showed in the subtitle tutorial where we added some dang old text to the camera. So if I come in here, I'm gonna say this, I'm fine with it being Minecraft text. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say like camera one or something like that. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna parent it to the CCTV one and have that go up there and let's go ahead and bring up the camera again so we can actually see it and select i want it to be the uh, the uh, camera here but since our active camera is kind of set up already then we have an issue there but you know anyway so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and bring out our text let's go ahead and do like so and what we can do actually while i'm trying to get this sorted out we can actually just watch it right here on the screen probably hopefully all right so i'm going to go ahead and rotate the text because it needs to be in line with the camera going to bring it out and i'm going to go ahead and bring the mix color up to white let's just just in case and we're going to bring the brightness up of course that again may mess with the bloom if we have that set but we'll just go with that for now oops didn't mean to do that i'm going to go ahead to the scale and bring that down so i can adjust all the settings and something like that let's go with 0.15 i don't know maybe too much I'm just gonna move it up or actually move it down wherever you want it you can't see it because of the horizon back there so for the sake of the tutorial we'll just do like that let me go ahead and just move that up just a tad i feel like it's a little bit too far down anyway so ugh, right about there all right so as you can see there you have like a camera with a hud on it and you can just have it going back and forth and like that's camera one and then you could do the same for this one and say that's camera two just by duplicating the text object and then parenting it i'm sure you know how to do all that stuff but that's basically what you would do man that's it it's like a little security camera and a monitor and everything so uh that's pretty much it the only thing you'd want to do to make sure that when you render this actually let me go ahead and uh find out where's our camera this camera a here is in kind of a weird position let's bring it up so what you could do now is like when you animate this camera you're actually going to have like the ability to record your scene and do things and then show these on the actual camera so that can be helpful as well that way you know that this is always going to be if i click away then active camera is camera A, and that's the one that we're gonna film the actual animation with, and these are only gonna show up on these screens here. So uh, anyway, what you wanna do is go to your settings cog, you're gonna go over here to, let me see, graphics, and then you have camera buffer size, and what this does is actually tell how high quality these will be in the scene. If I bring this down to very small, you'll see that it actually pixelates it quite a bit, which is actually possibly a desired effect for a security camera. I can bring it down to small and it gives it more of a pixelated look, stuff like that. So that's something you could do. And uh, if you want it to be the highest quality, you know, you may want it to be on big or very big or something. As you can see, more and more detail shows up the higher you go. And if you go to gigantic, it's going to give you a warning. I'm not going to go to it for now since I'm recording, but that's what you could do and uh, again if you want it to be pixelated then you can have it on small or whatever that's basically it you can set these up however you want it to be just make sure that that is set uh where you want it to be for your animation however you want that to be so hopefully that covered everything i hope that was uh thorough enough to uh, get you by for this effect here. I think it's pretty cool and an interesting little thing that you can do if you follow these steps or find another better way. Of course, you can do more advanced things if you actually um, create this effect in like a video editor or something, but for this, you can actually animate it within Minimator and have it planted on screens like so and everything and whatnot, and then you're good to go. So I hope that was helpful, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. Feel free to check out the Discord if you want to join that and be, uh, you know, able to chat with everybody real time. Share it with your friends, your family, and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video.